money to build your church, then I'll change the initials. ABC can help you raise it. An example, First Baptist Church in Florida, raised four, we raised $14 million for them. Uh, a faith church in Dallas, we raised, raised $5.6 million. Uh, Abundant Living Center in another state, we raised $3 million for them. Uh, First Assembly in Florida, here's a little note tacked on by the pastor. They got him to send this back in, recommending them. He starts off, hallelujah, last night our church voted to launch our expansion program. Phase one will include a sanctuary to seat 6,000, an entry or foyer area, a bookstore, a radio station, balcony superstructure, and a parking lot for 1,500 cars. We will break ground Sunday, November 21st. On and on and on of all of these commercial ideas. You can't even open up one of these magazines today and you're not bombarded with, well, do you want to buy my book? Do you want to buy my tape? Do you want to hire me into your home? Do you want to hire me to be your pastor? I'll build your church for you. Uh, a lot of them you'll find the advertisements to uh, build your sign outside of your church for you, you know, to let people know who's in there, what's going on in there. Here's another article. Now you can afford to add comfort and beauty to your church with pad a pew. <laughs> well, you got that point. I don't need to read on there. Uh, they just go on and on. Here's plexiglass lecterns. Custom made, handcrafted styles for every budget. Get closer to your congregation. Use a plexiglass lectern. <laughs> These podiums are custom made to your height and needs, handcrafted in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania tradition, and there are styles available for every budget. Here's your average duped pastor getting closer to his congregation by preaching from a glass plexiglass pulpit. And this, it, you find this in all of your magazines. They must be a big company here because they're always advertising how you can do away with Ezra's wooden pulpit back in Nehemiah and go to the more modern day space age type. And their message is as transparent as their pulpit Amen. because it has nothing to it. That's what I say about those that preach from those. I say your message is as transparent as you are and what you have to say. Now, every page you turn here, they want you to come to their Bible school. On the other page, here's someone that wants you to come to their Bible school. Everyone trying to... The next page, the very next page, someone wants you to come to their Bible school. Now, here's a lady that's got uh, rainbow books for sale. <laughs> here they want you to celebrate, celebrate their 30th anniversary with them in a place in Florida. Uh, he's just been on TV just today, as a matter of fact. Yesterday, he's been speaking on one of the programs. Oh, by the way, the uh, title message, the cover story, is how to avoid falling in love with the person that you're counseling. And it is a pathetic article. And it's given by a leading Christian psychologist. Has a young minister here trying to avoid the arms of another woman. How to avoid falling in love with the person you're counseling. This is a charismatic magazine. And they're wasting their time on things like that. Well, we won't answer that. You can think of your own answers. They've got articles here, Restoration of the Church, Seven Approaches to Church Growth by another speaker. Page after page of advertisements. You can even go to Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem. A lot of people advertising for that. Uh, here's Mr. So-and-so and his associates, National Ministerial Marketing Company. Uh, they provide tax-sheltered programs paying top interest, currently up to 15% plus tax shelter. Life insurance parsonage replacement program at age 40, $100,000, 15.61 per month on annual renewable term as long as you're a non-smoker and you have the right health qualifications. Minister salary income insurance. This is minister salary income insurance. Well, 
I have to check into that. <laughs> well, no, I can't now that I read what it's about. What would happen to you if you were disabled due to sickness or accident? Your income may stop. Probably would. <laughs> Now, we've got a plan for you to help you whenever you're a pastor and whenever you get sick. Charismatic magazine. See, we're not reading from non-charismatic. All this comes... Uh-oh, here's Warhorse, our friend Warhorse again. <laughs> he's, he's back in this magazine. He's got a... See, a whole full-page article there about Warhorse wanting Timothy's. <laughs> I've seen him talk before, and I've seen him preach before, and his hand is just like that. I believe he's a war horse. He's been around a while. Looks like they're, well, I don't know what they're selling there. It's a cat sitting on top of a computer. Probably the computer is what they're selling. Church music, trends, stress, more worship. The articles in here, which curriculum is right for your church? This is an in-depth report of Sunday school material. Now, you don't think something's wrong with the charismatic movement out there? It doesn't take very long looking in some of these popular magazines and it becomes fairly evident in a hurry that they've only changed the name of their church. Now it's a charismatic church, but they really haven't changed anything about themselves at all. Uh, this one is about body exercise, good to exercise, uh, keeping your ministry in balance. And he says, watch out. I remember reading this one. Uh, those that those that believe in the faith message, then you're out of balance there. If you believe in the faith message, what to do whenever you're the associate pastor and you've got to stand in for the pastor? Tis the season to pick Christmas music. And this is summertime. I just got this. There's an article on soul will soul winning. Here's a big article. Thoughts on hiring a new church secretary. <laughs> more special reports, more glass pulpits for sale, tapes for sale, books, tables, chairs, crosses, dove pens, all types of tape equipment in here, films for rent, New Testament on cassette. Here's just a fella, just his picture selling himself. More pews, organs, more pews, uh, more books. Here's another place, I guess the same one, that builds churches for the glory of God. Here's another one, high-quality, distinctive wooden toys. It gives a picture. This 18-wheeler log truck is a half foot, is a foot and a half long, sells for $14.95, postage page, continental United States. And it gives you a picture here of what you can get for the little kitties, a, uh, an 18-wheeler log truck for $14.95, postpaid. What are we saying in all this? Commercialism. Buying and selling, buying and selling. You can't go anywhere, but they've always got something that they want you to buy. Now, where did Israel learn this? They learned it in Babylonian captivity. Charismatic movement, it simply shows that they're in captivity because they're learning the same trends as the world in general out there. They're not progressing any beyond that. And they seem in many regards to, to be actually sliding backwards. Well, I've got some other things. Here's another place that we happen to, to know. I know the people here personally. They've even ordered some of our, our books on the JDS heresy. But that doesn't mean we're not going to use them for an example if they fit the bill. They're asking us to pray for them. And formally, we're believing a lot of the things we believe. But uh, they, another state, they're asking us to pray because they're applying for a fed federally funded low-interest downtown restoration project loan to purchase and renovate two buildings for their church. You, used to be like us. They just met in a place because I know some people that were there. I was never there, but I know some people. And taught the worship, taught the word, went home, lived the word. That's why... We have to continually warn you of these things. Some of you may think you already know this, but you just watch. In the future, it's going to become worse. And if you don't watch out, you may think, well, 
you sure are harsh on these people all the time. And I see what you're saying. But do you have to be so harsh? Amen. Well, we're going to have to just stay with the word. Matthew 23, Jesus said, You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? I haven't said that tonight. I think I probably said it before, but I haven't said it tonight. We do say that of them. They are serpents, Amen. a generation of vipers. How can they escape the damnation of hell? That's what he said. That came from the one who never did anything wrong. So we'd only be following his steps to say the same thing. So you might see what we're saying, but you better not soften up in your attitude out there. Because, again, I know some people who had a strong stand against this type of shenanigans that takes place in the charismatic movement and then began to be convicted by their own weak shallow conscience well after all you know we're all trying to serve god blah 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 no one's perfect no one has all the truth blah 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 and what they mean by that is well they could be right and they could be wrong but let's don't criticize anyone else and now they're doing the same things that at one time they used to criticize so if you don't stay on your toes and on guard against these ministries you better not be sitting there watching them on TV all day and kind of feeling sorry for them. And, you know, I wish Brother Ross wouldn't say what he says about them. I don't spend a lot of time watching them. It's just a waste of time. But when I can tune in, I tune in. And I just have to tune right out. One of them on this week, the regular hosts are gone, another couple on. I haven't seen them, but my wife watched it, and she said they got to the end of one of their programs this week and started talking about explicit marital relations right there on, she says national, but of course that's satellite, international network. And started talking about all types of things that shouldn't have been, been talked about when you're talking to millions of people all over the world. Well, back to this group says, our church activities coming up include our development of a Sunday school program in order to meet the teaching needs of every member. That's what the pastor's for. If you're not reaching their teaching needs, you better get a new pastor then. We're expecting to develop a children's ministry with children's church, Sunday school, and a Saturday morning outreach to the community called Mother's Morning. We feel that offering three hours of child care on a free basis to mothers in the community will especially enable working mothers, who shouldn't be working anyway, to attend to their weekly chores. They're helping the lost, unregenerate world out there. They're going to start Mother's Morning. Now, remember, I'm not talking, dear friends, about someone that you would know about. I'm talking about someone that used to believe what you're taught here. But how easily, Paul said, oh, you foolish Galatians, how easily someone bewitched you. It doesn't take much, friends. I don't know what it'll be for you. Maybe someone who's a little fancier of a speaker, whose dress is better, who's more well-known than I am or whoever you're listening to. I don't know what it'll be, but it doesn't take much. And Paul had been and taught those people in Galatia. And he has to write back and say, now you're so foolish. You began in the spirit and now you think that you're going to be made perfect by the flesh? Same thing happening today. People have begun in the spirit. And now they're giving up all of what they had to begin with. And they're going back to emphasizing the carnal, the mundane, the programs. Mother's morning. That's a new one for me. Three hours of child care free to mothers in the community so that working mothers can do their chores. They stop working, they can take care of their chores then and take care of their own children too. Well, you see, they'll play on a soft spot there. Uh, they're asking for money there. We'll go beyond that. But a couple of newsletters before that one, they said that they would not ever ask for money. And it came, oh, just a few months later. And they're asking for money. Here they say the grand, our grand opening will present, oh, this is, uh, I'll rename it, um, uh, Birch Coffee House. This is a coffee house that they run. And our grand opening will feature a group 
step by step. And then such and such twins will also be here with their rollicking good humor, which has caused them to be known as the Smothers Brothers of Southern Gospel. Can you believe that a church that once stood for the truth now has their coffee house, and they've got the Southern Smothers Brothers to entertain you for a while. Down at the bottom, they are saying, uh, concerning a certain new ministry outreach in their church, please beg your friends who need a miracle to be here. It won't do any good if you have to beg them to be there. When we moved from another mail out, when we moved from our worship center to a new place, they moved their worship center to a new place, God began to show us a strategy for taking the city. This is a place down in Georgia. I don't mind mentioning the state because that could be a hundred of different places. Uh, it will take people with their abilities, energies, and callings, and in parentheses, as well as your tithes and offerings. Got to be sure to remind you of that. And here they've got a whole page, all of that page, all of this page, the goal vision for, and they named their assembly. You see, they don't call it a church. They know that church isn't in the Bible. They know it's assembly, so such and such assembly. Here's their specifics in the strategy for taking the land. We're going to do like Joshua did and go in and take the land. Evangelism. Effectively communicating the life-giving kingdom gospel through several routes. Supporting ongoing evangelism, such as our prison ministry and nursing home visitation one-on-one -on -one individual outreach, home groups, evangelistic rallies, and our such-and-such -such Birch Coffee House, which is our youth evangelistic outreach. Then we'll also, number two, be involved in community education, effectively communicating the message of faith, authority, and dominion that God is restoring to his church in this hour so that the word going forth will work mightily in our midst. We will do this by our such-and-such -such bookstore, a local resource for your witnessing and counseling ministry, selling books, tapes, records. We have space available. We need someone called to this particular ministry who will run the store, order stock, keep it staffed. An individual or several who will invest in the initial expense of setting up the facility, obtaining the initial stock, etc. Also in our community education, we will be purchasing a UHF, TV station for $10,000. We have space available. We have a young man willing to serve full-time as a manager. We have a satellite dish. All we need is the 10000 You knew they were going to say that. They've got everything but what they need in order to get what they want. They want the 10000 We'll have a Christian library, music ministry, recognizing that the life of praise effectively liberates the believer as well as reaching the needs of hurting mankind we see an ongoing core group of saints who are willing to study to achieve excellence in music, being vehicles of teaching and leading worship. Here's what they have. We have talent and we have the anointing. Misspell the word anointing. Charismatics always spell it A-double-N. Just got one in to begin with. Got two later on, but one to begin with. What we need is, what, of course, what's expensive. They didn't ask for the anointing. They already got that. They need instruments. They need musicians, a group prepared to minister within and without of our, our assembly, representing us to the community, children's ministry, youth ministry, Christian training center. We want 50 students, grades 1 through 12. Excellent curriculum published by a Mennonite publishing house. That would be pretty good Mennonite, but... Nevertheless, building, they need a new building. Uh, our down payment will be made such and such date. Of course, they need the money for the down payment. Equipment needed in the church will be another keyboard instrument, sound system, overhead projector, nursery. It's not mandatory, but it would be nice if we could have. Missionary program, short-term service, long-term service, and will offer Spanish classes to prepare us minister to the millions of lost souls in our hemisphere. How would you like it if we had all that going on here? How many things was that? Uh, eight things. That's their goal and vision. And under each of the eight things was about eight more things there. You've got about 56 different things. 
That is their goal and vision. Trying to, they're just pumping and pumping, trying to get life back into the people. That I know some of the people there who once at one time had life in them. But they began to look around, you see, and they saw, you know, we're so small, just as despised, neglected, persecuted, ridiculed, narrow-minded, critical, if you will, charismatic assembly, mean, harsh, arbitrary, <laughs> true to the word, only, you know, one way for everything, not your way and my way, and we'll flip a coin to see who's right over it. Only one way, narrow, straight-minded. And all the other things they say about us, they were saying about them. So they just began to look around, let's do like everyone else is doing. It seems to be working everywhere else. Then let's just follow in everyone else's footsteps. Turn over to Hebrews chapter 12. There is an acceptable way in which we're supposed to serve him, and that happens not to be it. Evidently, they don't realize that there are acceptable and unacceptable ways to serve God. We're giving you all this, although we've covered some along this line whenever we were teaching on trying the spirits which if you will think back open up your eyes to just a whole lot of different things different particular things rather than just lumping everyone together and saying they're all wrong that's unfair to do but when you can go newsletter after newsletter tape after tape book after book television radio appearance after television radio appearance and find nothing but a lot of unscriptural ideas beliefs practices and doctrines well, it gets a little old on you after a while, and you've got to say something about it then. You can't just say, well, we're just going to pray for them and love them anyway because we'd expect them to do that for us. In all honesty, we can say we wouldn't expect them to do that for us, although they probably would. We would expect them to rebuke us because the Bible says you find a brother in error and sin, rebuke him. Amen. Don't pray for him and love him. Rebuke him. If you want to pray for him and love him, you can do that in your closet. But when it comes to the public scene, the public stage, then the Bible says rebuke with all long suffering. Hebrews 12, 25. Just a few verses here. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh. For if they escape not who refused him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he hath promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as the things that are made, that is, man-made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain now this is what god's going to do friends haggai had prophesied that of referring to one particular incident and the writer of hebrews takes this and saying god is still yet once more in other words he's done it before but yet once more god's going to shake and this time not only heaven but earth also and not only earth but heaven also and he's going to bring down all of these buildings that men are building so that the things that are of his spirit will remain. He said, I'm going to bring down, verse 27, that the, uh, he said, I'm going to remove those things that are shaken as the things that are made. In other words, what he means here is man-made. That whenever he shakes, the only things that won't come down will be those built by him. But those that do come down are going to be all of these religious ikes and isms of men that have plagued the church for centuries. And guess who's going to be right in the middle of all of it? Your average charismatic Christian. Because he's got so many superstructures built around him, they may just end up falling on him. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, you see, Men are trying to establish their own kingdom here, Baptist kingdom, charismatic kingdom, 
God said all of those are man-made. All of those kingdoms are going to be shaken. But the writer says, We, receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. Oh, we need to pray that God keeps our eyes always toward his word and toward him. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leads unto life. And few there be that find it. But you know what he, what he went on to say? Broad is that way that goes to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. Oh, God, keep our eyes on him and on his word because we see them left and right falling for all types of deception. And the greatest deception is this last thing we've been covering is all of the commercialism that's involved out there. You see, for the life of me, it seems like everyone, as soon as they get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, everyone out there, I mean everyone, thinks they're so important. Have you recognized that? Whenever they're on TV, this fellow giving his testimony and this one saying that and that one doing this and this one now thinks he's called to write a book and this one thinks he's called to pastor a church. And I've told my wife more than one time, who do, who do they think they are? They think they are so important as though they've got something that's worth listening to. Nothing but pride, ego, and vanity in most people. As the Bible says, taking the grace of God and turning it into lasciviousness. And as Peter says in 2 Peter 2, with feigned words making merchandise of one another. Merchandise. Most of these big ministers, we've dealt with them in the past, but we continually have to deal with them because they're always there. Won't even come into your little church of a hundred people. And most of them, wherever they go, have to have a guaranteed amount of money before they come in. Now, I don't know if this hits you at the very bottom of your being like it does me, but I can hardly imagine what's going to happen to these people on the day of judgment when they evidently they don't know God you see they don't know God they don't know his word they know nothing but denominational bondage and ritual they don't know who Jesus Christ is they don't know anything about his word they have such a neat system of proof text and dear friends you go ahead and try but you'll never convince them otherwise because they have so many proof texts in their mind that their way is right and they've never read in between those proof texts except to look for another one that goes with the one at the left and the one at the right. And you can just labor. It takes, it takes us a lot of time for some of you to come out of your bondages that you've been in in the past. But in the, in the last few years, you've, got, you've had plenty of opportunities that have presented themselves to you to come out of one more bondage here, one more denominational heresy here, one more charismatic heresy. And they're not coming out of any out there. They're just going deeper and deeper into these things. So covetous, so boastful, so proud. Dear friends, in the years that we've been here teaching, you're just now just beginning, just beginning to get an idea of who God is and what his word has to say and i mean from the beginning of creation we've spent months and months just in the beginning we haven't even got to the end and we'll spend months and months in the end and you're just beginning to get an idea where do you think that leaves them like that passage we read over in first peter 5 here the other week in some message if the righteous scarcely be saved then where does that leave the sinner and the ungodly if you people just barely now, you might think you know more, but I can tell you you don't. You just barely have an idea of who God really is. That's how vast he is and how vast his word is. And these people think they are, can be a jack of all trades, just know everything about everything. And they don't. They don't know anything about anything. And I'll tell you what, it's continually our burden. It's an, as they say in the military, an S&D mission, search and destroy mission, that wherever we find, wherever we hear of air, 
and heresy. Creeping in, then we're just going to always confront it. You have to confront heresy with the Word of God. And uh, so in the, in the weeks to come, as the Lord leads, we'll be dealing with some of these various heresies that men are inventing, that they picked up from the father of all lies. But you see, I'm not being easy on these people because there are, there's available, Bibles are everywhere. Books about faith, healing are everywhere. Why hasn't someone seen the truth in these areas? They just read all around it. They see one little thing and then they just read all around it. And they don't seem to see anything else about that truth. And I'm talking about the whole charismatic movement out there. It is Babylon. And it's manifesting a spirit of commercialism, which is what Babylon is known for, all of its commercialism and idolatry and deception that it had in it. All of its witchcraft that Babylon was known for. And what does Paul say? Who hath bewitched you? Why is it that everyone seems to have something they think you want to buy? Now, if you haven't noticed that, you just start looking in your charismatic magazines on every page. Someone thinks they've got something you want to buy. And they're always wanting to sell you their tapes and their books. They think they are so important. And if we think what we think about them, then what do you think God thinks about these people who know nothing at all compared to what he knows, nothing compared to what we know? But how much more compared to what he knows would they fall short of the glory of God and come short of knowing anything true about his word? Praise God. That's why we're just going to continue to emphasize these things to you that none of you get caught up in these deceptions. Uh, it doesn't matter if we're here for the next 50 years. Amen. You better not start looking around for greener pastures. Right. Amen. You say, are, you're, are you saying that you don't think I'm ready to be a pastor yet? What do you think? If you do, it's pride, ego, and vanity because you only are beginning to know what God's Word teaches. Oh, the writer here says, let us have grace whereby we can acceptably serve Him in reverence and fear. These people aren't serving God. They're serving divers' lust of their own flesh. You can hardly get one of them still. There are so many, as we read in that one man's article, pastoral conferences, youth conferences, overseas conferences, non-overseas conferences, out-of-state conferences, non-out-of-state conferences, city conferences, county conferences. They just keep you busy all the time. But that's always so satisfying to the flesh to have all these different things. You see, we're, ta we're trying to teach you these things in a practical way. You think whenever you go somewhere, to some other meeting somewhere else. You know, it's just kind of a little bit different than it is coming here all the time. Think, well, it's a little bit new. It's a little bit different. You better watch out because you'll get snared. So many people have gotten snared in the past. Some people right out of this church have gotten yeah. snared right. in the past. So you say, well, you shouldn't be covering it. We would never do that. Well, some people have, have been snared in the past. And we want you to have good spiritual wisdom so you can recognize these things. There's no sense in me being able to recognize them and you not being able to. And it doesn't, I don't have to go very far. I mean, on every page you'll find something wrong. This magazine, they've got a dove on just about every page. That's easy enough for you to find, but what else could you find there? Well... Hopefully, for most of you here, it wouldn't be too difficult to find what's wrong with what people are saying today. But unless you're paying attention when you're here, unless you're doing your homework, then you're not going to remember all these things, and you're just going to be an open prey at the right opportunity, whenever the right time comes, to be deceived for one of these things. You see, some people who ought to know better are deceived by some of the most outrageous heresies just the way the Christian life has been in the past. 
People who should know better have fallen for some of the most outrageous and unscriptural heresies. You would have thought that they would have fallen for something less than that earlier. But the devil waited to play his hand until the time where he could catch them hook, line, and sinker. They'd been dabbling around long enough on the outside to think, well, maybe over here is the right thing, maybe over there, maybe this new doctrine is it. I'm not saying we're the only ones that have the truth here, but I'm just saying wherever the truth is, people better stay with what the truth is. It doesn't matter if you're being taught the truth by a fence post. Stay by the fence post then. If you're back to numbers, if you're being taught the truth by a donkey, stay with the donkey. Stay with whatever it is where you're learning the truth. People are giving up the truth for error and for deception. That's what Paul says. How is it that you've been bewitched away from those true things that we taught you? Go back over. We'll go back to Galatians in closing to see what Paul says over in Galatians chapter 1 about all of this. But our whole emphasis this evening has been the, the spirit of Babylon, commercialism, revelry, idolatry, paganism that is seen. One of these other magazines, while you're turning, I'll try to find which one it was. This is an Assembly of God church in Florida. Now here's utter paganism. They're putting on their great crucifixion play with some blasphemous sinner here imitating Jesus as he hangs on the cross. Now if I were a Christian, I couldn't even attend something like that, let alone be the one who's up there, me, just a sinner, even if you're a sinner saved by grace, a sinner nevertheless, imitating the holy, spotless, undefiled, made higher than the heavens, son of god that's blasphemy as far as god is concerned for a man to portray himself there as though he really knew what the sufferings of the lord jesus christ was really like as he hung on that cross and i don't know how many have been the times where ministers in drawing some comparison and parallel or they needed a comparison or parallel go back and will use jesus his suffering in on the cross his agony in the garden and say well you know it's like jesus said not my will but thine be done well it's all right to pray that but don't think that you're doing on the same level he did because here is the holy son of god being required although he did it voluntarily to surrender up his life and that's not something easy to do and especially when you don't deserve it you've never sinned before you've never done anything wrong and you're always hearing people compare themselves or compare their prayers to some prayer that Jesus prayed. Or even the Apostle Paul. What does our war horse friend say? He says, I want to be like the aged Apostle Paul in picking a Timothy. You realize how far away this, this weird fella is from Paul's gospel? Paul's talking to him, by the way, in Galatians 3. Are you so foolish? Did you begin in the Spirit? Are you now going to be made perfect in the flesh? You see, that what I'm saying is they've got no conception of the gospel of Paul, of Peter, of Jesus, of Moses, of any of them. They have no conception of them. Thinking that he is anywhere on the same level as the great apostle Paul was. Well, you just have to spend a lot of time in your studies and you can only then begin to appreciate some of these things in the word. But in Galatians 1, we'll close. Verse 6, Galatians 1. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Don't let us have to ring your telephone up and say that to you. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you. Then let that, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Now, Paul, of course, all of Galatians is dealing with the subject of salvation by faith. That's the gospel message that he is bringing into focus here it's salvation by faith because 
Remember, the Judaizers are the ones that have trouble. Those are the men outside, the ones who trouble the Galatians, trying to pervert the gospel of Christ back into legalism and a works religion. What do most charismatics do? Get you so busy working, doing things. And I don't know where that leaves JDS, who are saying we're not saved now by faith in what Paul says, the sacrifice of Calvary, but we're saved by his sacrifice at the hands of the devil in hell. Bible says, let that man be accursed. And we say, let that man and let his wife, because they're teaching it too, be accursed as far as God is concerned. See, I can tell some of you out there, you're understanding what we're saying, but you're not grasping that. You don't understand what God thinks about all of this nonsense that's going on. Let that man be accursed, Paul said. God's not going to just pass over that and forgive that brother, that sister, and let his wife be accursed if she's teaching it like most of them are, or if she's not at least believing it along with her husband. By the way, you won't get a greater judgment if you just believe it, but don't convince anyone else of your heresy. If you want to be a heretic, then be it in your closet. If you want to be a heretic, be it unto yourself. Oh, sure, you'll suffer the consequences, but don't tell anyone else and cause them to fall headlong along with you. The way is so straight. The way is so narrow.